Chair recognizes the gentleman from Pennsylvania. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield myself such time as I may consume. Gentleman is recognized. Uh, Mr. Speaker, before I came to Congress, uh, I was a federal prosecutor in my hometown of Pittsburgh. And the biggest law enforcement challenges that we had then and really still have today are opioids uh, and gun violence. Marijuana just didn't register in terms of the risk that it opposed, it, it posed to people on a day-to-day -day basis compared to those two things. Yet because of the way the federal criminal laws are written and the way that cannabis is placed in Schedule 1, uh, it is very easy for a marijuana offense to actually get someone a worse sentence than an opioid offense like overprescribing Oxycontin or selling fentanyl. Uh, or a firearms offense, like possession of a firearm or shooting at someone, uh, our federal laws are out of place. And so it's in the spirit of wanting to make sure that our law enforcement priorities are focused on the most serious crimes and the most violent crimes uh, that I can support the removal of cannabis from Schedule 1. Uh, this bill came up once before in the previous Congress under a closed rule in which there were not opportunities for amendment. And so I want to thank uh, the leadership and the chairman this time around for allowing members uh, under an open rule to make some amendments because while I do support uh, the removal of cannabis from Schedule 1, I think as we've heard in the debate today, there are many questions about what happens the day after that and are we being careful enough uh, to ensure that the public gets the best possible balance of the benefits of, of taxing and regulating cannabis uh, while still protecting children and making sure that we have safe and efficient workplaces. Uh, so the amendment that I'm offering here today aims to answer a couple of key questions. Uh, what happens when essential workers, firefighters, people that operate heavy equipment on infrastructure projects, people who work in public safety and national security, uh, what are we willing to tolerate as far as those workers on the job site, potentially with cannabis in their system? Uh, we need to know how to test for it. We need to know what the rules are to keep people safe on that job site and most importantly, keep the public safe so that these people continue working. Uh, same question for schools. What are the best practices for schools in a world where cannabis is no longer in Schedule 1 of the Controlled Substances Act? In a world where cannabis could be in corner stores that children walk past on their way home? In a world where school bus drivers or teachers uh, may be legally authorized to use cannabis in their off time? All we're trying to do is answer these questions. Now, there are some uh, who see problems with a change in the law, and they see challenges, and they shrink from them. And they say, let's keep the status quo the same. Let's not tackle these problems. What we are trying to do here is do the public one better than that. There is an ironclad case for removing cannabis from Schedule 1 and focusing our law enforcement priorities where they should be. Uh, but we have to take steps to make sure that we do this in a careful, cautious, and correct manner. That's what my amendment uh, offers, Mr. Speaker, and I reserve the balance of my time.